the other night I got an idea and the idea is what would happen if I ran Windows 10 64 bit on the minimum requirements then I thought you know that wasn't good enough what if I run it on the 32 bit requirements if you don't know Windows 10 64 bit requires 2 gigabytes of RAM and Windows 10 32 bit requires 1 gigabyte of RAM well my laptop has 4 right now but if I go over and put this in it it will have not 1 gigabyte of RAM not 2 gigabytes of RAM but 0.5 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, 512 megabytes of RAM, which is one quarter of Windows 10 64-bit requirements. I don't know how this is going to work. And to add to that, I will be installing Windows 10 on this. This right here is a 320 gigabyte, 5,200 RPM Western Digital Hard Drive from probably 2009 or 2010. But without further ado, let's get this horrible setup put together and see how it works, shall we? Also, for anyone wondering what the specs are on this, it has some super old HD graphics and it also has this CPU right here, an Intel Pentium T4200. It is underpowered, but it does work pretty good. This is how it is on Windows 10 with 4 gigabytes of RAM and an SSD from Samsung. It's not the fastest, but it's able to, for example, go to YouTube and watch YouTube videos, and it's also able to edit videos as well. As you see, it is able to play back 480p video just fine. It does start struggling around the 720p mark though, and the CPU is roughly pegged at 100% the entire time when it is playing back the 720p 60 frames per second YouTube video. But without further ado though, let's turn this off and install Windows 10 on the old hard drive and put half a gigabyte of RAM in here. So from here it is as simple as setting the computer to boot off the DVD and doing the normal Windows install. Well, at least that's what I figured. For some reason, the computer refused to post no matter what I did. I reseeded the RAM, tried different RAM slots, and still no post. I know the RAM works. I took it out of my old Dell Inspiron 1300 when I upgraded to 2GB of DDR2. The RAM is the correct speed as well. The 4GB of DDR2 I took out of the laptop is 667MHz, and the 512MB stick is as well 667MHz. I am not not sure why it's not working. And to double check that I didn't break something, I tried the 4GB kit and posted off of it with no issue. So it seems the laptop highly dislikes that 512MB stick. Which to be fair, it's probably for the best. Sadly, I didn't have another 512MB stick of RAM. Instead I found a 1GB stick of DDR2, so I stuck that in instead. This is still half of Windows 10's minimum requirements, so this still should be extremely slow with this hard drive. In the installation it was using 660 megabytes of RAM which is a bit over half. Not too bad, but I wonder what it's going to be like in Windows. I also set up a timer so we can see how long it takes to install Windows 10. Also, sorry about the screen glare making it hard to read what's on the screen. I tried my best to fix it and I couldn't fix it. I'm using a webcam to record the video. If you have any idea how to fix this, please do let me know in the comments below. Windows 10 took 58 minutes to get to the desktop, which seems like a long time. But I don't know how long it normally takes to install Windows 10 on a decently fast computer with a DVD. It might take that long normally, but it certainly does seem like a long time. In the desktop with nothing open, it was using roughly 90 to 97% of the RAM, doing absolutely nothing, which is enormous, okay? You do not want Windows to be using 97% of your RAM when you're just on the desktop. I also opted to go over over and make a custom page file size of roughly 10.7 gigabytes. The reason why is I'm hoping that might help the performance at least some. Restarting Windows 10 is atrociously slow. It took roughly 5 minutes from pressing the restart button to actually get back to the desktop with all the icons loaded in. For example, of how slow that is, this computer right here is the oldest possible computer to run Windows 10. It was released in 2003. The CPU in it is a AMD Athlon 3200+, which was 
released in 2003. It also has 2GB of DDR1 RAM, 400MHz, and also a IDE hard drive. And it manages to restart in 2 minutes and 40 seconds, which is half the time, as my laptop does with 1GB of RAM. Granted, it does have Windows 10 32-bit instead of my laptop having Windows 10 64-bit. So to install the graphics drivers took a rather long time, which that is a understatement. It took 22 minutes to install the graphics drivers, and it was all due to the RAM being at 100%, which is making the hard drive be pinned at 100% the entire time. Using Windows 10 with 1GB of DDR2 is really, really, really slow. It took 18 hours for the Windows updates to complete. Once they were complete, I tried to go and navigate through Windows and try to, you know, do some super simple stuff like opening the settings app, which somehow managed to take several minutes just to open the settings. Though, impressively, opening up Microsoft Edge was somewhat okay. Well, okay, it was atrocious, but it only took one minute, which is somehow faster than opening up the settings app. I figured I should start by doing something rather easy, just searching up for a dark desktop background, and that even made Microsoft Edge not respond. But in total, it only took around two minutes to load that tab. I say only, like it's not a big deal. Only two minutes is... <laughs> Uh, it's it's not good. It took about four minutes to download a image off of Microsoft Edge and set it as the desktop background. And to load YouTube.com and get into a video took about three minutes, which is as well horrendously slow. Though something it is able to handle somewhat relatively decently is downloading Google Chrome. It only took around a minute 50 seconds for it to download. To install Google Chrome took roughly 8 minutes. Also, when it comes to YouTube playback, it is able to do it, but it does stutter a bit. But after a while of loading, it did work. On Google, YouTube worked just about the same. It worked, just not great. Then I decided to do some extremely light gaming by going over and playing Solitaire that is pre-installed on Windows 10. After 3 minutes of loading, it finally opened up. I wasn't even expecting it to open, but somehow it managed to, which is really impressive. I'm still surprised it opened, to be honest. It was a stuttery mess, but after a while, it became pretty smooth and you could actually play a game if you wanted. I don't know how to play these games, but you know, it did work. So this entire time, through the last 18 hours, the hard drive has been at 100% utilization the entire time. So this got me wondering, how would it work if I put an SSD in here? Because SSDs tend to be a lot faster than hard drives. So I went over and stuck my SSD in. Booting into Windows took a lot less time with the SSD. It took less than one minute to boot into Windows, and Windows was pretty much immediately responsive, which is a lot different from the hard drive. The RAM is still basically at 100% the entire time, though the SSD is able to keep up with the page file a lot better. It is a lot more responsive. Though after a while, the RAM usage did end up going down, because I'm presuming it went over and put the RAM stuff into the SSD. SSD. I don't know how to explain it because I don't 100% understand it, but I think it went over and put stuff from the RAM into the SSD, and that's why the RAM has less usage. Opening up Google and just using it in general was a lot more responsive than it was with the hard drive. It wasn't immaculate, but it did work quite well. But we also have to keep in mind, we're using a CPU from 2008 here, so it's not going to be super fast in the first place. Opening up YouTube took quite a while, though it was definitely a lot faster than the hard drive as well, though it wasn't as fast as with 4GB of RAM. Loading a YouTube video as well worked somewhat decently, though the only issue here was the CPU was pinned at 100% the entire time. Once the video loaded, it played back pretty smoothly. While a YouTube video was playing in the background, I decided to open up some other websites like Reddit. While everything was going gone, it was using around 1.7 to 2GB of RAM. 
RAM. Well, I shouldn't say RAM. It's about half in the page file and half in the actual RAM. Because keep in mind, we only have one gigabyte of RAM, so whatever doesn't fit in the RAM is going to have to toss into the page file. Then I opened up user benchmark and everything continued to be responsive. The page file just got used more and more, but it still did feel somewhat responsive and it was a somewhat decent experience. So the laptop is holding up with one gigabyte of RAM with an SSD, not with a hard drive. Do not do this with a hard drive. Then I was wondering, how would the hard drive fare with two gigabytes of DDR2? Would it work? Would it be horrible? I don't know, I had to find out. When I say find out what, I mean find out if the RAM still works from throwing it on the ground by mistake. Good, it still works. Booting into Windows took around 3 minutes, which is definitely a lot faster than a hard drive with more RAM, so it definitely is getting slowed down with the lack of RAM. Though it was about 2 minutes faster with the 2GB stick than just having 1GB in there, which is a plus. Web browsing definitely felt a lot more responsive with 2GB of RAM instead of 1. But it definitely is slower with 2GB of RAM in a hard drive than it was with 1GB of RAM and an SSD but it does work. After that, I just figured to finish it off, let's try 4GB of RAM with the hard drive to see what happens. The Windows boot time went from 3 minutes with 2GB of RAM to 2 minutes with 4GB of RAM. It's only a bit faster, but it definitely is noticeable. Web browsing with a hard drive and 4GB of RAM feels equivalent to web browsing with a SSD and 4GB of RAM. It doesn't feel any slower with the hard drive, though keep in mind again, the CPU in this computer is not really that powerful, so it's not going to benefit too much from having a faster hard drive in this situation. I decided to open up Microsoft Solitaire again, and instead of taking about 3 minutes for it to load, it only took around 35 seconds, which is a ton faster. I don't know what the moral of this story is, to be honest. I guess use 4 gigabytes of RAM with a hard drive, and if you're stuck with 1 gigabyte of RAM, get an SSD? Maybe? I don't know. I would say you're better off getting 4 gigabytes of RAM with a hard drive, because it puts less strain on the SSD. Because if you had an SSD with 1 gigabyte of RAM, it would be constantly swapping the files, and it would wear itself out a lot faster than a hard drive occasionally digging into the page file. But that's just my thought on it. A hard drive isn't that bad for normal use. In fact, the computer I'm editing this video on actually has a hard drive as its boot drive. I was curious how a hard drive holds up in 2022, and it actually holds up pretty fairly. Either way, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, or it was helpful in some way, make sure to leave a like. Either way though, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you again in the next video. See ya!